Hey guys, what's going on? It's Steph here. I hope you've been well. I know I have. And this week's video is going to be kind of a quickie. I made a really special find that I wanted to highlight and it was a short hunt that day but I don't want to muddy it up with another day just for the sake of making a longer video because this find is that special. It is yet another rare coin. I've been on really good coins this year and I will be extremely lucky if I ever find another. I'll be more apt to find more Fujios before I'm about to find what you're gonna see. But before we get into the metal detecting, as you guys might recall from last week, I am doing a giveaway for Chris Altman's From the Ground Up. The rules were in last week's video. If you didn't enter already, I'm sorry. Entries are now closed and I have chosen a winner just a few minutes before I actually filmed this part. So let's take a look at that right now. Okay guys, it's time to pick a winner for our giveaway of the book From the Ground Up by Chris Altman. As you can see, I have last week's video in front of us right now, and there is a reason for that. But first, um, as you may recall from last week's video, the giveaway just included two simple rules, which were you needed to be subscribed and you needed to leave a comment with the words Spanish silver, which is why I have it up on the screen right here. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people did leave a comment, but they just chose not to subscribe. I guess nobody really bargained for the fact that yes, I am in fact looking through a list of my 2,800 subscribers to make sure you are subscribed. So um, to those who commented and didn't subscribe, shame on you. You just tricked yourself out of a really awesome book and you also made me spend a lot of time this afternoon <laughs> looking through that list. But bitterness aside, let's get this going and hopefully this catch will make the video. Um, so again, I have this up just to show you. It is in fact last week's video where I'm gonna get a link here. Copy that. And I'm going to paste it into my random comment picker. And we're going to grab that. Okay. I'm going to put a couple of filters on here. I don't want to include replies because I don't want multiple, uh, you know, chances to win. Everyone should have one chance. Keyword filter, Spanish silver. Typed painfully, slowly with one hand. Okay. And it does not matter if it's caps or not. Trust me, I should know. I've tried this a few times today. I continue, and 131 comments. I'm gonna pick a winner. All right, so the great, <laughs> I really like that name. The Great Coin Holios, that's fantastic. I really hope you are in fact subscribed because I love that name, that's hilarious. So um, if you are subscribed, this will make it into the video. If you're not, I guess I'll just bang my head against a wall one more time. But, um, so what you have to do, the Great Coin Holios, <laughs> I love that, is you need to uh, leave me a comment with your email address. It's the only way for me to verify it's you. So go ahead, leave me a comment with your email address, and then I will email you asking for your mailing address and all that fun stuff. So congratulations, and let's move on with the show. Okay, so again, congrats to the great corn... <laughs> I can't even say it without almost saying, hang on, corn, how do you... <laughs> I gotta scrap all that. You like coins and you like 90s cartoons, I think we can be friends. Don't forget, shoot me your email in the comments below so that I can email you to get your mailing address, all that. I am repeating what I just said in that other excerpt. So let's not do that, let's move right along. Quick reminder before we hop in, I am no longer with Kelly Co. Metal Detectors. I now sell exclusively for the Digger's Den. So take a look over my left shoulder. I think it's my left shoulder. Yeah, yeah it is. I actually remembered this week. Um, you can see the website there and the code to use at checkout along with my reach info below, which is probably the preferred way to get in touch with me. Well, definitely the preferred way to get in touch with me. So anything metal detecting related at all, for gear come to me okay let's hop in okay well i just got an iron target but i think it's going to be pretty cool it's written up about a 17 18 grunt 17 18 grunt in the equinox which yeah i thought it was probably iron and that is correct but sometimes that's good iron and i have a buckle here which doesn't look like your typical horse tack buckle um it probably is but I think that's an iron shoe buckle. I take that, I think, wait a minute. Nope, I'm lying. <laughs> See, I'm very easily excited. Yeah, this is some kind of um, horse tack buckle, but hey. All right, cool relic. 
Well, I've been out here for a while. Uh, not a ton of finds yet. I did get a really cool suspender clip, which I did not film because I feel like I film them all the time. Let me show you that first before I show you what's in the plug. It's a pretty one. I probably should have filmed it right after I dug it. But we're going to move on to what I just dug. And when it came out of the hole, I literally said, wow, that's effing fancy. <laughs> so, but we try not to swear on this channel. So I'm not going to repeat that completely. It's got to be some kind of a brooch or a pin or... Eh, hmm. Maybe a sash buckle? I don't know. I am definitely going to clean that up. That's really pretty. Okay, well, I cleaned it off, and yeah, I think I'm going to go with sash buckle, um, just because it's really wide. Normally, I'd say maybe it's a bag strap or something, but very ornate and pretty bent. Um, I'm, I just tried to bend it a little bit, but it has some resistance, so I'm not going to mess with that until I get home, but that's a beautiful piece. Really like that. That's got to be probably 1850s or later. We didn't usually, oh, to my knowledge, we didn't really do stamped brass or make anything out of stamped brass until at least the mid 1800s. So that's very cool. Well, next target here was pretty iffy and it was at least, I don't know, probably let me put my pin pointer down there to show you. It's at the very bottom of this right in here. So maybe 10, 11 inches. Pulled it out. And it's iron, that's why it was iffy and bouncy. But it's a cool little keyhole escutcheon. I like that. I don't think there's any ornamentation on there, but if I find that there is, I'll come back and show you. That's really cool. Well, I have to say, I'm just really surprised I'm picking anything up today that's non-ferrous because I have just beat this field up. Not gonna show it to you, but in any case, uh, I've got a 13, 14 signal somewhere in there. And it was about six or eight inches down. I just saw something round pop out of the hole, which is a little flat button. Uh, I think the shank is on here and it's just smooshed. I can't really tell. And, um, oh, it's a tomback button. Cool, okay. And that actually came out pretty shiny. Very nice. So, yeah, not going to complain about that. Very old, probably late 1700s. Awesome. All right, now this might be something pretty cool. I really don't know what I have here, but I got a 16 signal. It was reading six inches down and sounded tiny, so it was really only like three inches in the ground. And I started playing with it, but I saw that it was fancy, so that's why the camera's rolling now. Um, it's got stuff on it. I don't know what. And it looks like maybe a clipped on or something, because I don't think it's a uh, cuff link, so let me come right back. I'm definitely going to uh, brush that off. That looks like something cool. Well, I think we might just have to go with fancy bauble. <laughs> I don't see anything that's like military or anything on here. It just looks like a floral pattern. And the other side, definitely some kind of like clip or it attached to something. I don't know. It doesn't quite feel heavy enough to be horse tack. And I think it was meant to be looked at close up. So, um, cool little personal item. No idea what it is, but I like it. Okay, well, I just got like a 10 to 11 signal, and it was reading six inches down, but it was quite a bit deeper, actually. Pulled a nail out of the hole, went back in, and there's this interesting-looking piece of brass, I think. Oh, it's one of those, um, I think it's part of a suspender. <laughs> I find a lot of these out here. I'm not at all surprised that I found another. Okay, not too, too exciting. We'll move on. Okay, guys, well, I moved right to the side of the road. I mean... That's where it is, and obviously you can hear the traffic, so we're just going to have to shout over it, but we just got a little silver. I'm really excited because I have no clue what it is yet. I don't know. It was between like a 23, 24. Ooh, I don't know what that is. Please be a half real. Please be a half real. Please be a half real. I think it might be. Oh, no, maybe it's seat. You know what? I, I really can't tell. It almost looks like a seated from here, but... Okay, well, I'm going to go somewhere quieter and spray this off and report back, because that's awesome. Okay, I lied. I'm not going to go anywhere quieter. <laughs> I can't even get a date off of this yet. Um, yeah, but wow. That was in circulation for a long, long, long time. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to get a date under a loop, but if not, that's still awesome. Okay, back again really quick. I think it's in 1875. And I got a nice surprise in the back. That's a Carson City Mint. Those are tough to find. That is so awesome. 
God, I, I really do think this must have been in circulation for about 50 years, but I do not care. It's so exciting. So seriously, though, the likelihood of me pulling another CC mint coin is like slim to none. And the reason it's so rare is because the mint wasn't open for that long. Not only that, I live on the East Coast. That came from Carson City, Nevada. So we just don't see a lot of them up where I am. When I said in the beginning of the video, I'm far more apt to find a Fujio than I am another one of these coins, that's probably correct. And we're gonna go into the wrap up now, but first, if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and that notification bell if you've enjoyed this video. All right, on to the wrap up. Okay, so it is wrap up time. Let's take a look at everything we found here. This is some of the stuff I didn't film. Um, these, I'm just, I find these every time I am there. And some of these are actually um, Spencer casings from the Civil War, or at least from a similar gun. So that's pretty cool. I mean, they're like mid to late 1800s, somewhere in there. I keep them for inexplicable reasons. Um, <laughs> sardine can opener if you ever find one of these now you know what that is in case you don't recognize it from uh using one yourself but yeah that's garbage i just wanted to show it to you it was kind of funny i thought it was a skeleton key at first they always fool me and i hate them for that this little piece here has some text on there i think it's like maybe coleman's something or other i don't know i can't really read it um it's just kind of some nasty old tin also garbage but again just wanted to show you piece of a spoon or something not really sure a nondescript piece of brass or copper this is a colonial era dinner knife part of one anyway the handle um so it's unfortunate that it was broken but they usually are and let's see here actually this is pretty cool this is part of a carpenter's car carpenter's ruler god i'm trying to rush through this i'm sorry <laughs> really shouldn't do that um and this is just where it would have hinged um you find these a lot but some people just really have no idea of what they are so now you know it's part of a carpenter's ruler it could have been you know maybe late 1700s early 1800s or deeper into the 1800s i'm not really sure but it is like well over 150 years old so that's pretty cool little clock gear there these terrible leather rivets i hate them because they sound like coins everybody hates them uh, a little overalls button there Looks like it says Lindsay something and co. Didn't quite take the time to read that or clean it up, obviously. I was distracted with other stuff like this fancy thing. Um, again, as I captioned in the video, I don't think this is actually a sash buckle because, well, there's nothing to buckle it to. So I was thinking maybe, I don't know, like it would have gone along the ribbon of a dress or something like that. Like the ribbon would have gone over this part in the middle. And I don't know. It's just, it's super fancy. Obviously, I did end up unbending it. All I had to do to anneal it, uh, because it's just thin stamped brass, is um, just heat it up with some hot water and go to town and I was very careful with it, but uh, yeah, I really like that piece. I just have no idea what it is. So if you do, let me know. And there's the noise I was referring to earlier, or like maybe I didn't, I don't know, but my neighbors make a noise. So anyway, <laughs> it is that time of the year, spring cleaning and all that fun stuff. So this is that mystery item. I'm not sure what it is. I don't think it's a cuff link unless you guys have some insight for me. I've never seen one with a clasp like that on the back. Um, and it is completely flush to the front of it. So I don't know, but it's fancy and cool either way. Our little Tom back button there. No shank, but that's how we usually find them. Nice keyhole escutcheon. What I don't think I mentioned in the video is that um, there was part of the pop property that burned down right in that area. And that's what this is. This is all fire damage. That's why I thought it was fancy at first when I was filming it. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty cool. And let's see here suspender clasp that's going to be late 1800s i think the patent date is like 92 and 95 is in 1892 and 1895 the horse tack buckle we filmed and the suspender clip that i filmed briefly but i did not film it coming out of the hole which i wish i had because it's really fancy i actually really like that one and do -do -do, star of the show which is already and has been actually that was filmed a while ago <laughs> like the end of March or something. Um, this is my little CC mint. You can just make out the CC because it's so worn. And I mean, look at the front. That thing is just wasted. You can just make out the five at the end there if you look really carefully. Um, so yeah, <laughs> very, very um, rough shape, but I don't care. This is the way I've been displaying it is with the, um, the one dime side up. I do have a base for it, but just for filming purposes, thought it was easier to show you that way. And yeah, really great time out there as always. 
Okay, guys, well, that does it for this week's short metal detecting adventure. And remember, get out there, save what you can, do what you love. We'll see you next week.